host for There is Hope is Richard Dover. Welcome to There is Hope TV. We have been on the air for the last four years in Seattle on cable channel 77 on the internet. Today is going to be our last broadcast. Now there's a variety of reasons for that, but two main reasons is one, is I believe I'm being called to do more one-on-one -on -one mentoring. And my wife Carmen and I also believe that we're to do more ministry in our home with uh, couples and families. And so this will be our last broadcast. Please stay tuned. Even though this is our last broadcast, I hope you won't tune us out, change the channel, have some things to share with you. I think some things that will be helpful to you. First off, I want to let you know we have over 170 previous broadcasts that's on the internet that you can watch 24-7. Again, over 170 different broadcasts we have done in the last four years. You can go to thereshopetv.org. In just a moment, I'm going to be sharing some of the topics that we covered. I believe there are topics that we covered that can be of help to you. That there are some things that maybe you're going through or somebody else is going through, and when you hear some of these topics, it's going to hit your heart. It's going to strike you as maybe something that you can watch. We also have podcasts of many of our broadcasts. And we also have podcasts on addiction and recovery from our There's Hope radio show that we had in the past. You can listen to those podcasts by going to there'shoperadio.org. So in today's show, I'm going to share some of the topics that we've covered over the last four years and out of our 170 broadcasts that we've had. And plus we have our podcast from our radio show in the past. So I want to share with you some of the topics that we have covered over the last four years. And again, every single show that we've had, 170 of them, can be accessed at thereishopetv.org. That's thereishopetv.org. One of the most important series I've ever done is titled Moving Beyond the Past. It was 12 lessons that took about 24 broadcasts to do. We actually have that series on the internet, and we have the podcast of it also. And the main focus was how do you get healed of the past? How do you move beyond the wounds, the scars of the past? Maybe it's things that the others done to you, or maybe it's things that you have done in the past, and you're having a hard time to let go and forgive yourself. And some of the topics we covered in this series was titled, The Prodigal Son. That should be obvious. The Prodigal Son needed to move beyond the past. We have face-to-face -face encounter. That If you want to get set free from the past, have a face-to-face -face encounter with God. Have an intimate relationship with Jesus. The power of the cross. When we understand what Jesus did on the cross, that there can be healing from the past. We talk about the concept of forgiveness. We need to learn how to forgive others, forgive ourselves, and forgive God. Yes, forgive God. Not because He needs forgiveness, but because of some things that have happened in our past, we may blame God for it. And so we need to learn how to be able to forgive God also. Inner vows. Many of us, because of the wounds and scars of the past, we make vows. And what happens, we make these vows, and these vows come to place, come to pass in our life, and then we see consequences from our inner vows. Same thing as bitter root judgments and expectancies. The concept with that is, is that we make a judgment, and out of that judgment, we have expectations. So the judgment is, you can't trust men, and so we carry that into a relationship. Can't trust women, we carry that into a relationship, and then we bring into that relationship the wounds and scars of the past. Closing open doors. If we don't close the doors of sin in our life, we're gonna find ourselves continuously living in the past. Breaking every curse. That there's generational curses that come into our life, and you know, if my dad was an alcoholic, then I become an alcoholic. And if you want to move beyond the past and walk in victory, you have to break those curses. And then we talk about being baptized in the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to walk in victory. Well, another topic that I covered was sexual harassment and sexual abuse, a biblical approach. That's something that you don't normally see covered in church. You don't see too many uh, teachings on that. And so what we do is we take a look at sexual, sexual harassment. What is it? And as Christians, we certainly shouldn't walk in it. And we talk about sexual abuse, and uh, we kind of talk about the, what can help to prevent those things from happening, how to, to not participate in sexual harassment and sexual abuse. A uh, very interesting topic to be able to look at it as a biblical approach. Also talk about the passion of Christ. Uh, this is for 
you know, during the Easter time, res what I call Resurrection Sunday time, uh, I talk about the Jesus' triumphant entry, the Passover in the garden, Jesus' trial and crucifixion, and resurrection and victory. I did a series on love. Some of the topics was what love is not, what is love, and the love of the Father. I spoke on revival. Are you in or are you out? How about delayed answers to prayer? We talk about what do you do when you see de delayed answers to prayer? How do you handle that? I think I had maybe four sermons on delayed answers to prayer. Having an encounter with God. Another topic was true freedom. What is true freedom? Is true freedom the freedom to descend and do whatever you want as a Christian? Or is true freedom to be able to walk in victory over sin? We explored the concept of faith in a couple of sermons. We are ambassadors for Christ. Share what about being ambassadors for Christ. We are God's workmanship. Do you know that you're God's workmanship? Intimacy with God. We explored how can you have intimacy with God? Spiritual warfare. What I shared about spiritual warfare is I, I shared about my own experiences with spiritual warfare and how do you deal with with spiritual warfare going on in your life. When you feel like the enemy's coming against you and you're ready to give up, what do you do? How do you battle against the spirits of darkness that come against you? I spoke on the fullness of God. What does it mean to walk in the fullness of God? Also talked about tithing. Yes, tithing, the principles of tithing. What I'm going to do is uh, just share a few clips with you of some of these topics uh, that you get an idea of some of the things that we cover. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power of your word to change hearts, to change lives. I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that takes the word and burns that word within our hearts to bring change to our life. And I thank you, Father God, for the promise of the Holy Spirit that lives within each believer, that we have the Holy Spirit live within us. And Lord, you say that you want to baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire, that you want to cleanse us, purify us, make us more like Jesus. And so, Lord God, and you do all those things in us, you put a fire within us. And Lord, as we uh, look and explore, what kind of fire burns in our heart? That we'd ask ourselves, what burns within us? And that, Father God, if it's anything besides you, it needs to go. So that we have just the fire of God in us and not a fire for the things of this world, a fire for all the other stuff that's out there. We'll have a fire for you. In Jesus' name, amen. So I have a question for you. What burns within your heart? What burns within your heart? That's a question each of us should ask ourselves. What burns within my heart? What do you have passion about? What, what gets you excited? What gets you motivated? And I would argue that we can have a choice that we can have whether that it's the fire of God or the fire of lust or the fire of the passion for the things of this world. Do you know that with God is black and white? Mm -hmm. How do we know that with God is black and white? Because mm -hmm. he says, I'd rather you be hot or cold than lukewarm. Mm -hmm. And if you have the fire of God living within you, you'll want to live differently. If you have the consuming fire working in you, you will want to give acceptable worship, whatever that means for you. Walk in the Christian walk, the reason is tough so many times because we're not filled with fire. We're filled with religion. A whole lot of religion will do you good. A little dab of Jesus and a bunch of religion. You know what you got? A little dab of Jesus and a whole bunch of religion. You know you got? Misery. No victory in your life. No excitement for the things of God. So, Father, will you set a fire in us in such a way, Lord, that we're doing the work that you've called us to do, and that, Lord, you would purify us, you would refine us, you would mold us, you would shape us, and, Lord God, we would be people that are on fire for God. What I want to do is I want to take this hymn, and I want to break it down. Because there's some powerful words in this hymn. It's powerful. Who's your anchor? If your anchor isn't Jesus, if your anchor isn't the Word, you know what you're going to be? Tossed to and fro. 
So just look at it. It says, it, if you want to go, if you can follow, here's our Bible for today. Page 202 on the hymnal, okay? You know me. I'm a Bible guy, so don't get mad that I didn't pull this exact, exactly out of the Bible. Will you forgive me? I was not prepared to look all the passages up for this. It's their fault. I didn't see it. If I would have seen the list and if I would have looked at the, the, the thing, I would have come up with all the verses. But we'll see when, how much you know your Bible. In times like these, you need a Savior. What times? Oh, well, you guys, you weren't supposed to say that. You're supposed to say, when it's tough times. And I was going to say you were wrong. Because it has to be all the time. So when, when, when does Jesus need to be my Savior? All the time. Guess what? There's a message in that. You don't get to choose when he's your Savior. You know what? Days are going good, so I don't need you to save me for anything. So I don't need you as my Savior. I'm sure God, our salvation isn't that way. I'm sure God doesn't say, well, you don't need me to save you today, so if you die today, you're going to trust in your own because you don't need me. And then tomorrow, if you need me, then you can trust in me and you'll get saved. Thank God that Jesus is our Savior, whether we want him to be our Savior. If we ask him to be the Lord of our life and be the Savior, when we don't want him to be in our life, guess what we still have? Salvation. Our salvation isn't up and down, so today I'm saved, tomorrow I'm not. Did anybody, if you're bold enough to raise your hand, was anybody taught in a, in a congregation of church that taught your salvation is up and down, up and down, up and down? You lose it one day, you lose it one day, you get it back, you lose it one day, you get it back. No. If he's my savior, I need him every day to save me and it's he is the one that saves me, not me. My works, my obedience don't save me. He saves me. Does that mean I shouldn't do the work of the kingdom? No, we're not talking about that. It says, in times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. What does an anchor do? It holds the ship, it holds the boat right where it's supposed to be. Anybody been on a river fishing? And you have a fishing hole that you want to fish. Unless you want to hold that motor and go around in circles over and over again and tie up your lines, what do you use? An anchor. And no matter how much that current is going, but if you're anchored up, anchor up. They cried out, crucify him. Who did they want to crucify? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus was the Lamb of God. They wanted to crucify the Lamb of God. <coughs> So we've got to have, we're going to have lamb later on. For Bala. So we have to decide which lamb we're going to crucify. Which lamb are we going to have for Bala? You know what? There's so many people here, we need both lambs. Right? Now, Jessica, I've already assured her we're really not killing her lambs. They're not old enough. Next year, we're doing it. Exodus chapter 12, verse 5, 7, 8. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Then you shall take some of the blood in front of the two doorposts and the lintel of the house in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roast on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. This lamb has become pretty familiar in this church. And he is on... Blemish. Thankful that he got covered by the blood of Jesus and also Susan washed him. <laughs> but he is perfect for a sacrifice because there's no blemish on him. Jesus had no sin whatsoever. That's why Jesus could be the sacrificial lamb. So we have a lamb. So the truth of the matter is is that the only blood that will cleanse us from unrighteousness is Jesus' blood. Amen. When the nation of Israel would sin, they would sacrifice an animal. It could be a goat, it could be a dove, it could be an ox. It was a sacrificial offering that they made. And they had to take the perfect animal. Now, if there's anything like some people I know, they said, I've sinned, so what i got to do is i got to sacrifice an animal, and I'm not going to take my best. I'm going to take that flawed one that I don't like. Well, it's about to be trouble, and I'm going to sacrifice it. At that time, 
Do you know that that sacrifice would be useless? And some people, when it comes to Jesus, he can forgive sin, but guess what? Unless you go to Jesus to forgive your sin, your sin will be forgiven. And we try to get forgiveness by many other things that we do. If we take the lamb, the perfect lamb, is this lamb guilty of anything? Totally innocent. Jesus, totally innocent. So we take the lamb, and we got to slit his throat. I know. Did you hear that? Amen. Jesus already sacrificed for us, so we don't have to sacrifice the lamb for our forgiveness. She's worried about the lamb. Okay, so we don't. But I want to show you the price that Jesus paid. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> So we've got to get in there someplace. Mm -hmm. Is there any? Got to cut him up. Oh. <laughs> we got to shed his blood. I know somebody else that shed their blood for forgiveness of sins. It's called Jesus Christ. Let's go to verse 17. Paul, can you put up verse 17? It says, Brethren, join in following my example and of those, observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. Now, how many know that it says, and I should grab this again, how many know it says a little bit different? I'm going to read in King James. Brethren, be followers of me. Does that look the same? And mark them which walk so as you have seen for an example. And what it's saying is what? Watch those who follow the example I'm setting. So Apostle Paul is speaking and he says, follow my example. Now i got a question for you. Is he talking about his example walking with Christ? Isn't that what he's talking about? Can you say that? Can you say, hey, neighbor, hey, co-worker, hey, student, hey, grocery clerk, hey, gas attendant, I want you to walk like I walk with Jesus. Can you say that? And if you can't, what areas are you holding on to that makes it that you can't say that? But Paul says that we should follow his example, not just his example, but others who are following his example. Now I want to clarify something. Did Paul say, be like me? It's a trick question. Did he say, be like me? Or did he say, follow my example? The reason I ask that is because Paul's not saying you have to have the same personality as me. He's not saying that you have to be an apostle like I'm an apostle. He's not saying that you have to have the same calling as me. He's not saying that you just need to be a duplicate apostle Paul. What he's saying, though, is to be an example as he's an example of following Christ. And so we all can have our own personalities, we all can have our own callings, and in the midst of that we will do things differently, but are we reflecting Christ? And a perfect example of that, if somebody has the, prof the calling of a prophet, if they have a calling of an exhorter, and that was part of Paul's calling, if they had that kind of calling, are they going to be maybe a little more direct when they say things? Are they going to maybe confront sin? Are they maybe going to challenge more? Absolutely. But if somebody has the calling of being a giver, they probably don't do a whole lot of talking to you about how you're living your life. What do they do? They just give. Different calling, different personality. But if somebody's a giver, should they reflect Jesus Christ? Absolutely. If somebody is a prophet, should they reflect Jesus Christ? Absolutely. God is faithful. What we're going to be talking about is pressing on. The title of the service, Press On, Push Through the Pain. How many know in this world there is pain? How many know in this world there's suffering? How many know in this world there's pain and suffering? Okay? They come together. And what we're going to talk about is pressing on, pushing through the pain. How many know that if you don't push through, the pain overtakes you? Now, let's talk about the pain. Can there be emotional pain? What about mental pain, where you're, there's mental torment going on? Maybe there's mental illness that you're going through. What about physical pain? Emotional pain, physical pain, mental illness, mental pain. What about spiritual? 
Anybody ever felt sometimes you're separated from God, felt like your sin is, is bringing division between you and God? Or what about relational pain? Pain in relationship to others. So are you going through some pain? You're not just raise your hand, but is somebody in here going through pain? I would think that there's probably one person at least that's going through pain. I know one. <laughs> me, me. <laughs> but there might be somebody else going through some kind of pain, so this sermon is for you. If you're a believer, listen. If you're a believer, any pain or suffering you go through, God is allowed it to come your way. Do you know that? If you're a believer, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then if any pain has come your way, God had to allow it. Do you understand that? That nothing can come to you unless God allows it. And if God allowed the pain to come your way, can God give you the strength to get through the pain? He better, if not, he's an evil God. A God that would allow you to go through pain and not give you the strength to go through it is an evil God. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the principles found in your word. We pray, Lord God, that we would honor you and glorify you, Lord, even in the preaching of the word. That, Lord, that your word would speak to our hearts. It would draw us. And that, Father God, we would apply the principles that we learn to the preaching of the word. Lord, as we talk about going to Jerusalem, that, Father God, our Jerusalem is right here in Burien, and we're going to learn what that means. And we pray that, Father God, that we would go. We would obey. In Jesus' name. Jesus, <coughs> if you look at that slide, it says, uh, he must go to Jerusalem. I change it to we must go to Jerusalem. But he must go to Jerusalem. In Matthew 16, 21, Jesus told his disciples, I have to go to Jerusalem. He has to go for a reason. To endure hardship. To be whipped, to be beaten, to be mocked, to die on the cross, to go into the grave so that he can be resurrected. So if you look at that passage, Jesus says, I have to go. He was determined he must go to Jerusalem. Why would you want to go to Jerusalem if you know you're going to be whipped and beaten, mocked, crucified, thrown in a grave? Why would you go? Because what did he know? There was a resurrection that was coming. He knew there'd be new life that would be coming. If he went to Jerusalem, he knew that ultimately there was going to be internal life for every believer in him. So he was willing to endure the hardship. How many know if I tell you to go into Jerusalem, to go into Judea, to go into Samaria, to go to the outer parts of the world, one of the things that stops us because we think, what is that going to cost me? In Acts 1.8, Jesus says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. So Jesus tells the disciples that you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and then there, there's something you're supposed to do. And the something you're supposed to do is to do what? Oh, you've got to wait before you do. Why? Because you've got to get filled with the Holy Spirit first. Or you won't do what you're supposed to do. Okay? He says, you're going to go into Jerusalem and you are to wait there and the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. You're going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and then you're to do what? To do where? Go where? Everywhere. Everywhere. Can I tell you, if they had not been filled with the Holy Spirit, they wouldn't have gone? How do we know that? Because before they got filled with the Holy Spirit, where were they? They were fishing for fish. Jesus tells them this because he has to catch up with them because they're going back to what they used to do. How many Christians go back to what they used to do? How many Christians go back to what they used to do instead of doing something new for Jesus? A lot of reasons why people backslide, the reason people fall away from God, the reason people don't grow in Christ, because they go back to the same way of living instead of doing something different. Well, that's some of the topics that we have covered in the past. We have, again, over 170 different sermons, teachings that we have done in the last four years. You can access any of them by going to there'shopetv.org. That's there'shopetv.org. 
We also have podcasts. That's at thereshoperadio.org. That's thereshoperadio.org. Share this with your friends. If there's something that you know is a, is a topic that would help a friend of yours, be sure to share it with them. Also, you can go to my blog, pastorrichblog.com. That's pastorrichblog.com. And uh, you can continue to follow some of the things that we share and speak on. Um, there's a way to subscribe and so you get an email every time I post a topic. As we finish this show, I just want to say to you, thank you so much for being one of our viewers or listening to us on, on our podcast. Uh, it has been a joy to be able to do this for the last four years. Pray for me. Pray for my wife, Carmi, that we'll walk in God's will, that we'll do what God calls us to do. Uh, we believe uh, we're supposed to do something different. Such a time as this, I believe there's a time for me again to do one-on-one -on -one mentoring and for us to minister more to couples and families in a more personal way. So be praying for us and I would appreciate that. And once again, we're going to end this show sharing with you how you can be born again. And, and uh, please, please check out the website there, soaptv.org. We have all kinds of spiritual resources there and help you to know how you can have a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. God bless you. Hi, this is Pastor Rich. Do you need to know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. Romans 10, 13 says, Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. John 1, 7 says, You must be born again. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And Matthew 1, 15 says, Repent you and believe the gospel. Will you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today? If you want to get more information, you can always go to our website to learn how to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can go to thereishopetv.org. That's thereishopetv.org. And we have information on frequently asked questions about Christianity. We let you know step by step how to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I encourage you to go to thereishopetv.org. That is thereishopetv.org. Also, I want to let you know, if you would like to talk to me personally, you can always give me a call toll-free anytime, 1-866-1-GOD. been listening to There is Hope with Pastor Richard Dover. Through Jesus Christ, we can live a victorious life.